Hey co-stars, welcome to another episode of Generation Films. My name is British Ben. And since so many of you seem to like our episode on sci-fi spacecraft based on real aircraft, we decided to give you another one. And no, Aquila from the children's TV show of the same name isn't one of them. That was based on an egg or something. I used to love that show as a kid. Give this video a like if you watched that. Americans, you missed out because that was a real gem on British TV. Anyway, this is five sci-fi craft based on real aircraft part two. Number one, the X-Jet. The X-Jet from the X-Men movies is based on the SR-71 Blackbird. In fact, the first version of the jet isn't just based on the SR-71 Blackbird, it literally is the SR-71 Blackbird, just with a few extra windows added, and also the ability to hover and perform vertical takeoffs and landings. The SR-71 Blackbird was a high-altitude strategic reconnaissance aircraft built by Lockheed Martin. It could travel at speeds of over Mark III at an altitude of 85,000 feet, basically on the edge of space. This is an actual photo taken from the cockpit. On its final flight in 1990, the plane flew from LA to Washington DC in 67 minutes. In later X-Men movies, we see newer versions of the X-Jet where the influence of design elements from more modern fighters can be observed. You can see a forward swept wing. This was similar to the Grumman X-29, an experimental aircraft operated by NASA and the US Air Force. Then we have twin tails and oval exhausts. These are reminiscent of the F-22 Raptor although the SR-71 concept is still there. But another ship that you may not have realized is also based on the SR-71 is number two, the J-Type 327 Nubian Royal Starship. In part one, I was just like, let's base everything off the A-10. And now it's like, let's base everything off the SR-71. Anyway, the Nubian Royal Starship is Padme's ship from the Phantom Menace. And if you put it next to the SR-71, you can certainly see a resemblance. But when some people on Reddit tried to point out the similarities, they were shot down by people stating the obvious. But in all seriousness, it did follow the same design, except with no wings and the cockpit further back on the body of the ship. The chrome finish was inspired by 1950s automobiles. And we also see the chrome finish on later starships operated by the Naboo royal family. They were into that. Number three, the Enterprise NX-01. This was the ship from Star Trek Enterprise, that early 2000s show that only lasted four seasons. But what you might not have realized was that the Enterprise NX-01 is actually based off of a real life aircraft. It took inspiration from the P-38 Lightning, which was a World War II bomber. The inspiration came obviously in the two nacelle design with the hole in the middle. The designers chose this design because they wanted to make it obvious that the ship could not separate this would be something that would come in the future in the Star Trek timeline. So basically they stuck an Akira class saucer section on the front of a P-38 bomber. So some fans took to calling it the Akira prize and you can see there are a lot of similarities between this ship and the Akira, even if they are used for different things. For example, the front of the saucer section on the Akira is the shuttle bay and the front of the saucer section on the Enterprise is the deflector dish, but they look very similar. And this is no coincidence. When an earlier design was shot down, Rick Berman apparently just said, use the Akira, meaning use the ship for Enterprise with no modification since it had only appeared briefly in the Battle of Sector 001 in First Contact at that time. But Doug Drexler and other members of the art department protested and so we got a Enterprise that was a cross between Akira and a P-38. Interestingly, the shuttles from Enterprise are actually based on another real world experimental aircraft the Lockheed X-33 space plane. Number four, the LAAT gunship. This is the troop transport ship that we see in the Battle of Geonosis. Here's some early concept art for the ship, but this design was heavily changed later on to look more like the Russian Mi-24, which is a helicopter. Is it just me or does this look like a pair of boobs? Anyway, they moved the boobs down to the nose and moved them further apart. They kept the angled wings, but moved them to the top coming out of the roof, and they kept the same overall shape of the body. Now, although it's a cool design, it doesn't seem like the safest of vessels. Number five, the ARC-170. 
Now the ARC-170 is one of the coolest and most underused vessels in the Star Wars movies, although you do see it more in the Clone Wars series. And this fighter shares many similarities with two, not one, but two World War II aircraft. So one of them is the P-61 Black Widow. No, not that Black Widow. Ah, that's better. The Black Widow was the first US aircraft designated as a night fighter, and thus it relied on radar and had three seats, one for the pilot, one for the gunner, and one for the radar operator. And we can see these three cockpits in the ARC-170 design as well. And the other plane that we can see similarities with is the B-25. Check out the engines, they're very similar to the ARC-170. All right, guys, and that is where we're going to have to leave the video today. You can see I'm on vacation. I've got to get back to the beach, so I'm going to leave it there. Leave a comment below. Let me know which one of these is your favorite, and if there are any other cool spaceships that are based on real planes and aircraft, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.